Hello and welcome to Let's Make an Atari 2600 Game Part 9. In this episode I start where my knowledge is the weakest, the actual cartridge hardware, and try to assemble my own 2600 compatible cartridge. What I've got here is a Activision Atari cartridge and the shell, the plastic that normally surrounds this was obliterated in shipping. So I figured it was a good candidate to uh, try to make my own cartridge. Now this is skiing. I guess I well, they wrote an S on it maybe. It's skiing, so they knew. Skiing is a uh, 2K game, so it's pretty small. Uh, the Atari can see up to about 4K without any kind of modifications or bank switching. So they had more space for these 2K for this game, probably because it was cheaper and the game didn't require any more size. But here's the plan. I'm going to remove skiing out of this. Uh, I guess this shield is to protect the ROM from, I don't know why. Um, so I'll remove that, I'll desolder this chip. I bought EEPROM, EEPROM, to replace it, you know. It uses the same power, five volts, and it's 8-bit data. However, this is 64K. It's much, much larger than the one that's on here. But that shouldn't matter. Uh, the Atari cannot see anywhere near as much as this chip can hold. But I expect that, you know, if I put skiing in the same spot, the Atari won't care that this is a much larger chip. It should just work. However, I can't just drop it in and replace it, partially because I didn't do enough homework before I bought it. Partially because it has two extra pins. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll remove that chip. <laughs> I've got a breadboard here. So here's the plan. Use wires from this to this breadboard, put our replacement chip properly seated, of course, and then plug this with a bunch of wires hanging off of it into an Atari and see if it can read this chip. EE problems can be electrically erased, so I can reuse this chip over and over again. So for this test, I'll just make sure that, that this circuit layout for this cartridge works the way I expect it will. This is the programmer I'm going to use. It's called a Mini Pro... I forget what the uh, Mini Pro Programmer TL866A. This thing supposedly can do thousands of EEPROMs. They can program them, and uh, it seems to be pretty well built. I don't know, I've never used a programmer before. So pretty well built for me means it works. But what you do is just lock that in, and then you lock it in place. And then we program the chip. Now, in theory, I can program any game I want, but I'm going to program skiing just to, I don't know, as a sanity check, just to make sure that it's working as expected. And if that works, I'll try something else. And if that works, then I'm on my way to making my own cartridges. The first step is removing the shield and the ROM chip underneath. And this proved to be pretty difficult, uh, mainly to my inexperience. I ended up needing to use a screwdriver to pry it away. The chip broke and left behind these two rogue pins. And don't worry about the ROM though, Activision skiing has been backed up probably a million times on the internet. Finally I checked for shorted traces. If you hear this sound, that means there's a short. So it looks like there isn't a short here, but I'll double check. No, that's good. Uh-oh. With a short identified, I used a solder wick to remove the excess. Oh, God. That poor. Oh. Ah. Oh. <coughs> yeah, that was great. Glad I did that. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, I just put some headers where that ROM chip was. 
Now you could have put a socket on here, or maybe even a um, zero insertion force socket or something like that. But I don't have any. And I couldn't just slot the ROM chip in there either because it's the wrong number of pins. So for now, <laughs> to make this dodgy project a little more dodgy, I'm using headers. So I've added some wires and this is what I've come up with. So what I'm gonna do now is plug in even more wires to these and put those into this breadboard. Okay, so now we have the uh, Atari cartridge wired up to this 64K ROM. And <laughs> this is really error prone. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's right. Well, that almost works. What do you think about that shed dog? Yeah, you don't care. Let's watch what happens. All right. No. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Well, there's a white screen that kind of looks like skiing. Well, I couldn't get skiing working, but I managed to get it to run Defender, sort of. You can see it's not, uh, it's not great quality there. And if I sneeze, or if I walk anywhere near it, it stops working. So I'm thinking maybe a breadboard isn't the best thing for this. But the concept is sound. So it's taken two days and this is the current state of my cartridge adapter. I changed out the uh, breadboard because I thought it was causing instability, but you know, it's still causing instability even with this breadboard. So the game's working, sort of. I think it's... Occasionally it messes up. I think it's because the... The data lines, I'm guessing, are sometimes noisy. See, I might... <laughs> where'd it go? <laughs> Where, where's my ship? <laughs> I, oh, it messes up. Well, here's the final working cartridge. I had to disconnect the ground from the EEPROM to make it stable. I have no idea how electricity is flowing through that. It's, I have no idea. Magic, I don't know. But it works, it's weird. So if I turn it on, check it out. First try. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> shoot stuff, you can move around, there's no issue. But I, I don't know why, I don't know how that, I don't know how that works. The only way I stumbled upon it was I was just pulling random things out to see what they did and I pulled out the ground and it worked. So, now that it's working, this is a 4K cartridge, um, I'll try, uh, I'll try a custom ROM, maybe the, I'll try the 4K Pac-Man and see if that works. I'll reprogram it. And uh, if everything's good with that, I think it's, I think I'm good to go as far as making cartridges for 4K games. So all I need to do is put it in this programmer. This, if I can do it once <laughs> uh, like that. And lock it in place. And program a new 4K game onto it. So I've put this Homebrew 4K Pac-Man on my cart. And this thing is amazing. It is so much better than the original Atari-made Pac-Man. It's not even funny. Listen to the sound. All right, look, the T has a bit, uh, a bit out of tune, but there's not much you can do about that. This is how it's made. Check this out. The sound.
That's amazing. All right, so that's running someone else's homebrew and it works. But now it's time to see if I get my own code uh, on an EEPROM and see if it works with this cartridge. I'm pretty sure it will. I'll get a test pattern running and um, that will be the start of a, of a new smaller game. And here's some code that I compiled on my computer, burned to the EEPROM, and I'm now testing it on my uh, Atari. So now I know how to make Atari cartridges that are 4K maximum. It's not a bad start and I can compile my own code. All right, what's next? 4K game, I think.